morning. My name is Alan Parker. I'm the president of the Justice Foundation. And I'm going to talk to you today about what I believe is the absolutely most transformational issue of all the issues that we're talking about today. And that is the issue of school choice. Amen. Thank you. We heard the Governor Abbott speak about it today. We've heard Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick speak about it in the campaign, and I would not be surprised if he speaks about it again today, though I don't know what his speech is going to be, but he is passionately for it, as we all know. And in the packet, you have something called Taxpayer Savings Grant. It's about the third or fourth document on the side. You might get that ready. I'm going to go over the details, but I want to talk about the big picture first, all right? In 1908, the atheists tried to take Bible reading, hymn singing, and prayers out of the Texas public schools. They said that's an establishment of religion prohibited by the Constitution. And the Texas Supreme Court was faced with the issue, do we take it out? And I'm only slightly paraphrasing. They said, will we starve the moral and spiritual nature of the many children out of deference to the few. They said no. The result would be moral chaos and anarchy. In 1962, the U.S. Supreme Court faced the same question. Shall we starve the moral and spiritual nature of the many out of deference to the few? And they said, yes, we will, and we will remove Bible reading, hymn singing, prayers, and God from public schools. Now, because God is gracious and kind, it's taken many decades for the total results of those to be seen. But we cannot continue to educate our children in what is by law, by Supreme Court decree, a godless system. I praise God for the missionary Christians in the system, and I don't urge them to leave. But we don't need to make our kindergarten children missionaries in a godless system. We need to educate them in a God-filled system. And by God's grace, the United States Supreme Court has given us that way. We do not have to have secular humanism and atheism forced on our children anymore. We can choose to have school choice, which answers the question, shall we starve the moral and spiritual nature out of deference to the few with this? We'll let people choose what kind of education they want. And the parents will get to choose whether they want a godless education or a God-filled education. And that's the American way, choice. I believe in the Constitution. There's two clauses in the Constitution on religion. There shall be no establishment of religion, but there shall be free exercise of religion. I don't want anybody forced to go to a school against their religion. I am opposed to the establishment of religion. But I believe with all my heart in the God-given religious liberty to worship God the way I want and to educate my children in God's way according to my conscience. That is a gift of God. And I believe... now. The educator or the lawmakers have to have a secular purpose for passing school choice. The secular purpose is to improve education. How many of you know that according to the standards called No Child Left Behind, which simply re me re uh, measure reading and math, that more than half the campuses in the state of Texas are failing to meet adequate yearly student progress? 55.8% failure. Only 44%, 44.2%, according to the last available data, 2012, most recent, were able to have a child in class for a year and give them enough knowledge to say you are adequate. That is how massive the failure is in the current system. I believe that's what happens when you take God out of a system. And you have a government monopoly 
and you have no competition and freedom. And school choice simply says, you're going to be able to take your child and your educational dollars that belong to the children as their trust funds. We call the board of trustees of a school district trustees, not board of directors, like a normal corporation or entity, but trustees, because the money is held in trust for the children. It's not the government's money. So what Donna Campbell's bill 276 does, which is called the Taxpayer Savings Grant, it tracks some language that was on the Republican primary ballot two years ago in 2012. And the Republican primary voters were asked this question. Do you believe that funding should, instead of funding the bureaucracy, funding should follow the child to the school of the parent's choice with a saving, a public or private, with a savings to the state? Okay, let me say that again, I say it very well. Should the money, instead of funding the bureaucracy, should the money follow the child to the school of the parent's choice, public or private, with a savings to the state? 85% of the Republican voters said yes, it should. All right? And so this bill is simply implementing the will of Republican voters. But it's not just so. And just last week, the, or in December, the state Republican Party made this one of their top eight legislative agendas for this session. But it is difficult. There is a massive government monopoly and the government employees and their allies do not want to give up the monopoly. They want children only to be educated by a government employee. And that doesn't have to happen. We already know it's constitutional to allow school choice. Um, so what this bill does is give you that choice. It's voluntary school choice. Actually, I'm going to say something that really is true. If you like your current school, you can keep it. Okay. And the beauty about this reform is, if you have a good school, nothing will change. Except you may get a waiting list of people to come in. But if it's a good school, because right now, we have 200 charter entities with 600 campuses across the state, and we have 100,000 children waiting to get into public charter schools, which are public schools but run by nonprofit entities, not government. And they were all created by private entrepreneurs who wanted to start schools to meet the needs of children. And there's 100,000. Why? Because we put an artificial limit on the number of charters we give out. Government creates scarcity. Choice creates abundance. We need more great schools in this state. So number one, it's voluntary. Then you can transfer your child from a public school to a private school at your choice. Who's eligible? All five million children in the state of Texas who go to current public school currently, okay? Now, if your child is entering kindergarten for the first year, then all students, uh, kindergarten or first grade, then all students will do it. That's basically a 12-year phase-in program for kids who are currently in private schools. If we were to pay for the private school tuition of every 500,000 enrolled at, say, $500,000, that's $2.5 billion that you all are saving the state by putting your own children in private school. Uh, so we don't, we're not advocating for an extra program of $2.5 but if your child's in public school or entering kindergarten for the first grade, then you can take 60% of the money that's spent on your child maintenance and operations fund to a private school of your choice. That would be about $55,400, which would actually cover the cost of most elementary schools in the state and many middle schools and high schools, though they tend to be a little more expensive and the school could either provide the difference or the parents could provide the difference. So basically you would be free to take a 60% share of your money to a private school. What happens to the rest? Some of it is kept to provide 
for the uh, structures that the public bonds have built and that we have to maintain. The rest are a savings to the state. So this is a savings money, all right? Now, one of the, there are two protections for private schools that we put into this bill. Specifically, there is a phrase in the bill that says, there will be no regulation of private schools other than what already exists. Okay, no new regulation of private schools. Uh, you know, there are things like safety and health. If you have 200 children, the building code may require you to have doors and exits and fire sprinklers, I don't know. But whatever is existing and schools comply with, that's all. And then the other thing is, this is run by the comptroller, not the Texas Education Agency, because we want no government control of private schools. So this is absolutely the best, most far-reaching bill that we think there's even a hope of getting, but we need your help. When you go to your senators and representatives today, we're particularly asking for co-sponsors for taxpayer savings grants. You've got the sheet of paper. You can go to our website, and if you give us your email, we'll send you weekly alerts through the session as to where the bill is and where it's going. We need your voice. School choice without regulation of private schools. Tell them that. And the public policy reason is, choice is supposed to be about alternatives, not one size fits all. If the highly regulated public system works for your child, choose that. If the less regulated public private school system works, choose that. And most people will go back and forth between the systems. We're not against public schools. I am against bad schools of whatever kind. And parents should be able to say what's best for my child at this phase of their life. In fact, I want to ask you, how many of you ever have ever had your child in a private school and public school? Okay? Most people who exercise choice have tended to go back and forth. It's not that we're against systems or for what's best for my child. Thank you all very much. We need your help.